Alrighty, so today we are going to look at some different software than you've probably seen before. This is called WonderDraft. It is a pretty neat little mapping software that's made for role-playing game players, dungeon masters, and the like. But I'm actually using it to make a board game. Uh, my, my friend and I are, are re-skinning a board game design that I did a long time ago. You can see the Illustrator file right here. So uh, this is my old, my old board. You can see the, the pieces there. Let me just quick and show you. So I did this entire thing in vector art before, right? And so now we are redoing it in uh, uh, trying to, you know, the style, I'm, I'm trying to make the styling a little bit more gritty and just a little bit more of a hand-drawn feel. And I just really like the way the art is coming out in this Wonder Draft. And uh, so that there's a lot of different options in here. And I'm just gonna quick and show you kind of how I'm doing this. In order to start, what I did last was I just made a copy of the previous file and saved it. And so now I'm gonna go back and essentially empty the land of all of its pieces. So I can start from, um, you know, essentially a, a blank slate. So I'm gonna go through and remove all these trees here, mountains and all that, get rid of the bridge. These other ones, I'm just gonna get rid of all this stuff so that there's no confusion about what we're doing. So there's that. And so then this, or really this piece here is gonna connect up to this piece here. So I need to move this river up two spaces because it's gonna kind of come like this across, as you can see in this piece here, right? It's gonna go, go down and across. I'm gonna go back to the land layer and I'm going to uh, paint in the land and I need a bigger brush. So, and you can use the same exact uh, quick keys as in Photoshop, which is pretty nice. It's the right bracket and uh, left bracket to make it smaller, right bracket to make it bigger. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this land back in here. It's on the wrong one there. So we're gonna put this river back out of here and we're gonna remove, so that was there, so we're gonna remove right here. So that's where the new one's gonna be. And similarly, it's gonna be here. So I'm gonna just put those in as a guide and I'll go back in and make them look pretty in a minute. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and remove all this so that it's starting from scratch because I want it to feel pretty consistent and whatnot. And then we're gonna also paint in, I like to have each of the layers be starting with kind of the same look. So I'm gonna go through and paint off all this. Da -da 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 -da. Just quick and knock this out really quick. And you see that background texture is actually part of the tile, it's part of the artwork that's part of this this uh, look. And so, the next part is gonna be to then do the river. So I'm gonna just back this up just a little bit. And this, and then I'm gonna put in the river. So this is the eraser tool here. And I need to double check this other one. So it's a little above center and a little below center. A little above center is where I'm going to. So what we're gonna do is, oops, that's the wrong layer. Let's try that again. So a little above center, so this is center. So why don't we remove a bit of this and then paint in a little above center. And I'm actually gonna make that brush just a little bit smaller so I can have a little bit more control over it. And then we're gonna go ahead and, you know, make it look kind of like a river does. You know, with a little bit of flowingness. 
And there, the other one had an island in it, but it's not really critical, but I think it makes it look a little nicer. So I'm going to do kind of a little of that action. Now let's look and see what I did before. So I just had one big island. It's not really that critical, but keep going to Photoshop. I think we'll do that. Maybe widen the river right here. So the point is that you're not able to f swim across. You actually have to use a bridge. And so then we put some bridges in to make it work. So we're going to have a trail. It's actually going to go from right next to the river. So it's kind of in the same in the same tile, really. And then it's going to cross across the river on this bridge and go out above it just like the last one. So let's go back to the software here. And the next thing we need to do is paint in some colored background. So I painted in everywhere that color and I'm now gonna put in a little bit of this. I'm gonna drop the opacity a little bit and I'm just gonna paint in some green just to kind of give it a little bit of a green look for some grassy kind of appearance. And you'll kind of see you kind of do it in layers or you know on this thing so then we've got the trail so let's do the trail next trail is got maximum brush opacity and then the brush size comes way down even more than that i think and it was in the same hex as this Oh, you know what? I think I need to go a bit darker with that before I can do that. So let's do bigger brush, less opacity, and uh, maybe even less than that. There we go. Just kind of add a little bit of darkness to this thing just to kind of mix it up a bit. Okay, and now for our trail, brush size, somewhere in there, and then it's going to go up and across. You know what, I think I'm going to put the bridge in first. So bridge, not gothic horror, let's just do that, bridge. So I've been using this bridge, which I think works well. I need to unmirror it, see which zone it's supposed to be in. It's supposed to be in the third one over. So that'll be one, two, three. So it'll be right in here. I'm gonna rotate it some. I don't like it like that. I might actually move that bridge. Put it. Right in here, maybe. Make this a little bit smaller. Something like that. There's my bridge. Great. And then back to the land where I can paint in the trail. side trail is going to be going straight up and around. It's going to kind of follow the river. So it's going to kind of go like this. Follow the river. And there's also a mine entrance right there. So we're probably going to also do a little of that to right here as well. It'd be not so thick, maybe smaller. Let's do something like this. Since it's a path going to the mountains. Makes more sense. So now for some symbols, we're going to go ahead and do some mountains. 
And I like to use these ones that are inked mountains. And the reason why I liked the inked mountains is that you can then color them. And I think it was these. Oh, maybe it was this. Yes, it was this. So we're going to have the scale. Okay, where am I putting these? I am putting them in one, two, three, four spaces. Basically going from here. I'm going to put them right in here. Through here. Here. And here. And then one of the things that I did the last time, which I thought looked pretty nice, is just putting a couple little hills in the area just to kind of, you know, make it look a little bit less spiny and a little bit more hilly. So that is what we got. And then we've got to paint those. So the way that works now is you go back to the land layer and then you choose the color you want to paint the mountains. And I've been painting them this grayish tone, make this a little bit bigger, bring my opacity down. And then see how I just kind of basically touch them and it paints them the, the gray tone. It's pretty cool. Um, it kind of uh, automatically hits them. Now, the one thing that I do wish is I wish I could like make snow-capped mountains. That would be pretty cool. But it doesn't really give me that functionality. What I don't want is green mountains. So I'm going to make sure they're not green. Because that would be weird. Green mountains and all. So we're going to paint this up. Okay. And then I also did a little bit of white before, and I think white's a good thing here and there to kind of just to mix them up a bit. Let's see how it kind of paints the whole thing. So you have to be a little bit selective about which ones you're painting. Otherwise, the whole thing be be all white everywhere. But I think it makes a, gives it a nice effect and makes it feel a little bit more consistent. I've got a piece of PNG art that I'm actually going to put in here that's a mine entrance that's real obvious. It's red and makes it more noticeable when you're looking at the tile because it's a very small, very small. The tile itself from, from this point here all the way down to this point is only four inches. So it, these are very small. Each of these hexes is one centimeter across essentially. And so then I need to put some forest in here. So we're going to do kind of the same thing. We're going to go back to symbols. And I've been using these tall, spiny-looking trees and just making them smaller so that their scale is not so off. I just need to confirm. I'm only putting it in one hex there and then a couple down at the bottom. I guess I should have done the other mountains. I'll do those in a minute. So let's put those right here. Let's just put the trees. Oh, those are kind of big. Smaller trees. don't want them to be bigger than the mountains. Just kind of paint them in. I want to have the same number of trees. So we're going to do this one. And this one. And then we're going to put mountains in these four hexes right here. So let's go back to the mountains. And we will put in, they've got to get bigger, of course. And you can change how dense the placement is and how un, you know undense it is and so on, which is pretty cool. Just gives you a lot of functionality. And you can kind of see how they paint in. You can also put an individual mountain in, but um, I like that you can just you know hold down the brush and let her fly. And then some small ones to just to kind of blend it a little bit, which I think looks nice like I did before and just kind of gives it a little bit more of that feel and then similarly need to paint those again so let's go back to the land layer grab the paintbrush we're going to go ahead and 
paint these suckers gray to start. And then we will fill them back in with white, periodical white mountains when it's all said and done. And each of these little tiles has taken me about an hour or so between start and finish. So they're not super fast to do, but they're not super slow to do. And I really like the way they come out. The software, I think, does a great job of making them look nice and, you know, just gives them a nice feel, kind of that nice hand-drawn feel. And uh, the way this software works is you're, you pay for the license, and it's, it's only like 30 bucks. It's very reasonable. And uh, it gives you access to these um, pieces, these tile sets and such. And uh, you can also tint the trees. So I'm going to use a smaller brush now. I'm going to go down in size. And if you click the very base of the tree, you'll see that you'll tint the tree. So there is that. And then the other thing that I do like to do is give a little bit of extra bigger brush size paint to the area around the trees. Just makes them feel more foresty. There we go. Save this because I haven't saved in a while. So we've got those things in and uh, there will be a mine right there. But like I said, that's going to be after the fact. So this is a good start. I think I've got what I need on here. Let me just confirm. Yes. And so now I just need to hide my overlay. I'm going to save it again. And then I'm going to export it. And it exports it in here. This is going to be, uh, which, I'll try to remember the name of this spot here. Jasper Hold Kicking Horse River. Jasper Hold Kicking Horse River C. Save. It's making a PNG file. So we'll go ahead and close that down, and then we'll open up the PSD. Go ahead and close that. So we will save as. This will be board C. Jasper hold, save. And probably kill off that layer. And then we're going to do, probably just going to hide all this stuff for now. Just group it all. So this is uh, B. So we're going to go ahead and import. Open the Jasper Hold PNG. Copy it. Paste it. Save. And then what I need is I need to grab the mine. Now, I don't know if the mine is in this layer or not. There's the mine. So we'll go ahead and put that up on top of that. There's the mine. So I need to put the mine, oops. I need to put the mine where it goes, which is gonna be right up here. Now, I'm not 100% sure that's gonna be in exactly the right spot, but it's a, it's a good start. I don't need that on this particular one. So we'll save that. And then we're gonna go ahead and open up this. And once again, we're gonna hide, gonna unlock that layer. We're gonna hide these. And actually, the grid pattern is gonna change on this. I'm gonna go ahead and kill that off. And I'm going to go back to this one. Make sure that's locked down. Copy. And paste in front. Hope that it's there. We'll find out in a second. Then we're going to go back to this one. And we're going to copy it. And we're going to paste in front. And it was there. So that's great. So then this is the old one. And once you're selected in here, you can go to this link area here, 
and once you've got it selected then it'll it'll select up here in the links palette and then I'm just going to hit the link and I am now going to link this to uh, Jasper board C place that's going to place my new board in there and then we'll go back to our back to our tile here and we'll see where we're at Let's see what that does for me so that's in the center now and that's in the center there which is still not quite there this needs to be up of center That's probably pretty close. See what that looks like. So that is right on the edge, which should work fine. And that is up of center, which should also work fine. Our mine is now moved almost completely off, so I need to move the mine down which is easy enough to do. And these things are just inconsistent, so they don't really matter. So that's fine. Li I'll have to line up this on the next piece, but that's fine too. And the trail and everything should be fine. So I'm gonna just move this mine down probably in here or in here. Let's see. Let's move the mine. Let's move it right to there. Which means I'm going to have to move the trail as well. But let's just start with that. And InDesign or Illustrator is going to automatically notice that the files have changed and you say, yes, I would like to update them and you'll see that move. So now it's right in the middle of the tile where I want it, and that's perfect. And there we are. So now my trail goes right into my mine. Now the last thing is to change my titles. So I have those on a separate layer here. And these are actually the old titles with the old copy, the old text. We're using a different font with a little bit bolder um, surrounding outline so that it's easier to see and also we're using the white uh, grid piece before we had the grids all were a real thin black line and they were pretty hard to see at times so the white's going to make those those spaces stand out a little bit better and the the titles being this much easier to see font will be better as well so this has to change to jasper hold jasper hold I think I'll do it on one line since there's plenty of room there. Jasper, hold. I'm going to move that over so that it obviously makes sense with that. And then copy that. Delete this. use my handy little tool again. That did not work. Why did that not work? Maybe I need to select this in order for that to work. There we go. And paste in front. And there we have it. Now the last thing is to confirm that there isn't any really crazy spacing, which can sometimes happen when you do these kinds of path sort of things. So I'm going to bring that in a little bit and I'm going to lock that down and we're going to do the same thing with the back one. Okay. And then the only other thing I notice here is that that's actually in front of the grid line. Is that what I really want? I guess it is. That definitely makes it more noticeable. So yeah, let's do that. It's in front of the grid line it is. So there is a completed tile for my upcoming game. And if you guys follow me here on my channel, you will eventually be notified of that game when it comes out. 
but you see here me making a tile for my upcoming board game. Anyway, thanks for watching today, and this is Eric at Learn Design with Eric.